Hello everybody, welcome back to Dominions 5. We are playing as Ladage Man in the first round of the tournament game. Sorry for that loud chair squeak. Um, I've got a couple more turns. Uh, this is turn 7, which has uh, recently been played, and we are currently on turn 8. Um, and I might do this in one or two episodes. We'll see how long I, I ramble on about other things. Uh, so, uh, we got a profit from Satis, so Calcium, <laughs> the Grave Consort, uh, is the profit of Chad Frontalobius. Okay, we did not, we've been searching with our Death One guy and he didn't find anything. Alright, we finally see the first battle with Tian Chi. Um, so Tian Chi has the Sacred, the Ancestor Vessels, uh, they have this, uh, fear-causing bow. Um, and there is a, a priest here, and he casts blessing on himself, so he is blessed, but the only bless effects are morale plus one. Uh, excuse me, just a moment. Okay, uh, so the only bless effect is, um... Is morale plus one, which is the normal thing that you get from being blessed. That doesn't mean he took fire. Um, so uh, this tells me that he is going for some kind of big awake bless. He doesn't have a rainbow um, because then you would take some dormant blesses. You know, you take maybe defense or like an air, you get some precision or whatever reinvigoration for the mages. Um, I suspect he has, well, he might have a titan, which could be dormant or imprisoned, uh, with a big weapons bless that's going to come online on year one for dormant titan. That is kind of what I suspect, because um, you can uh, forge some decent gear for a titan um, with the ancestor smiths and things like that. Um, so that's what I would imagine. He could also have something like a, a little like a lich, the demi-lich, um, with uh, death, and he could have some kind of bless with that. That would be fewer points than a titan. Um, so in other words, he wouldn't be using it as a super combatant. Um, but these guys can definitely take a good weapons bless, so uh, something like that wouldn't surprise me. Or, I mean, it could be like quickness, right? It could be uh, high water or something like that. So we'll have to see what that is. Um, so on the on the one hand, that's a little, and you can see in the meantime he's just doing um, hold he had hold an attack rear on top and bottom and a few cavalry running into the middle, uh, and that works quite well. Uh, he only loses one horseman, uh, so good for him. Um, I'll, we'll talk a bit more about Tianchi, but let's look at this other expansion. This is uh, Atlantis. Uh, we see Atlantis is expanding with these fellows, the Ice Guards. These are the very high resource cost to recruit, but uh, as you can see, they have very high protection, and they have a really nice shield, um, and they have these magic weapons, so really a strong unit. Plus, in, in the cold, excuse me, uh, they have ice protection too, so uh, when it's cold, these guys are going to be really strong. Uh, when it's hot, not so much. Uh, but still, these are fantastic troops, and I'm sure he's had a lot of... And they all have they also have decent um, hit points, like they're tougher than humans. Uh, so, great troops. Uh, so, he's expanding with these guys. Now, this is his profit, and so we can see that um, he has sort of a small bless here. He's got some air, earth, and astral. Uh, so, this could also be... Excuse me, I had a bit of a cough. Um, Air, Earth, Air, Earth, Astral. I'd have to check. Um, it could be a Titan. Uh, it could be a uh, like something like pure scales, right? Like a, just some minor blesses, like a statue or something like that. Uh -huh. Well, I'd have to see what Titan it would be if it was uh, just Air, Earth, Astral. Uh, those are also paths that he doesn't really have access to. Uh, so it makes a lot of sense to get those. Uh, maybe you get them on a Titan, so you can craft a lot of useful things. Um, so that is his. Uh, that's his bless. Now, uh, well, let's take let's take the opportunity this turn to take a look at Atlantis as a nation. Um, so that expansion goes fine for him, and then we expand here. 
um, with our dudes. Uh, there's a lot of heavy cavalry. Uh, we knew there was some heavy cavalry. It's a bit, I think, on the on the upper end of what we were expecting. But uh, they ran into our heavy protection guys who kind of chopped them up. They caused, they then caused the light infantry to route, and then everybody routes. Um, so we lost two guys, um, which is, I don't know, I guess it was only six heavy calf. Oh, because there were three mountain commanders, I guess it, it inflates their numbers. Um, we'll live with it. Uh, and an unexpected event, magic is fading. We lost uh, six air gems and two nature gems. Um, okay. Uh, well, before we talk about our orders, let's wrap up what I was going to say about Tenchi. So, um, yeah, Tenchi has, has zero bless on his sacreds, which, um, I'm not going to say is, is why he's having trouble expanding. He must have been either unlucky on the scouting reports in this province or maybe tried to be a little greedy. Um, you know, he, the heavy cav is good enough to expand normally. But, you know, you are taking a bit of a hit, right? If you did have some kind of ra rainbow bless with defense or, or blood surge, then, you know, just like four ancestor calf can, like, take on almost anything. Um, so, you know, that's a cost that he's paying. So now he's going to have better scales and some really powerful combo that's going to come online, you know, in year one, year two, is what I expect. So, you know, is that going to be worth the... Uh, you know, if he gets himself into a weaker early position, that's the trade-off from not having the bless early on. And then we'll see if he can recover from that later on. Um, let's take a look at Atlantis, uh, as we have now met this neighbor. I mean, we knew that this was going to be our neighbor. Um, and so uh, we can see that he is expanding using, uh, not these guys, the ones with shields these guys. So they cost 39 resources each, which is like as much as a knight almost. <laughs> uh, so that's a crazy amount of resources. Um, but these are all uh, very good troops. They just take they just take like a ton, a ton of resources. Um, so he does have sacreds. Uh, interestingly, the sacreds do not have ice protection and they do not have high protection. Um, so, uh, you know, on the one hand, because his sacreds have a lot of shock protection, which would be good against us because we have a lot of air magic. We'd be relying on air elementals and, and air evocations. But his sacreds with the shock protection are actually going to be super vulnerable to just crossbows, basically, right? Because no shield, no protection. Uh, and the bless he took, you know, wasn't designed for that. Um, seems to me the bless he has taken is uh, much more for these guys to thug them out. Uh, so he's taken reinvigoration, which is n just going to be good for. Um, well, actually, I thought even these guys aren't going to spell scale span. These are these paths are not super useful, but it's for these guys. So he's got reinvig, reinvig, shock, and what was the other thing? Um, I forget. A air, earth, astral. Astral was magic resistance, I think. Anyway, it's a, it's a bit of a friendly thug bless for, for these guys. So that makes total sense. These are pretty badass. They can do a lot of useful water buffs, liquid body quickness, and then um, they can uh, do invulnerability and whatever. So it can be nice little mini thugs. I mean, they're a little expensive, but they're a pretty decent chassis. And uh, especially if you get like earth randoms and they can self buff their armor even more. Um, and they can, they're also just great mages to have in the back line skele spamming, right? Uh, I guess the big thing that you worry about when fighting Atlantis is that they do counter us specifically in a few ways. First of all, having magic weapons everywhere means fog warriors is going to be useless in the mid game. Um, and I guess the other thing is they tend to, they have, uh, they can do Stygian Reigns really easily, which um, makes, get, adds 15 invulnerability to everything. So against mundane weapons, these guys are going to have really, really high protection. Now, we do have magic weapons on our uh, sacreds and we are going to have a lot of the sacred commanders so I think we can kind of offset that 
Um, and you know, our, our, our mundane weapons are armor piercing crossbows. So there is that, but, uh, their regular troops are going to end up with a ton of protection. Um, so anyways, this, and the other thing is that these guys are all, um, they all have, they are all like 22 and max age 500, which means our withering weapons are going to do <laughs> nothing against these guys, uh, which is unfortunate. Um, okay, so that's Atlantis. Um, let's talk about our, our plans and our, our troop movements and, and all of that. So, um, uh, oh, and we see Midgard. Over here. So now we've determined that Midgard is the northern neighbor of Satis. Um, this leaves uh, over here uh, one nation over here and one nation over here. Now I guess I, I've i confirmed this in the present, but at the time I also could have confirmed that this is Agartha because it's a cave start and this is Batal in the forest. That seems pretty obvious. Um, oh, there's also Ulm. Well, I know now that Ulm is here, uh, and but I also think by process of elimination that could have been. I mean, I guess Ulm could have been in the forest, and Patala could have been on this plains. Now I know that it is that this is the configuration. But <laughs> we'll talk about that when we talk about the next turn. Um, so things are continuing according to plan. So uh, this group here is going to move into this province. Um, it looks like Satis is. You know, I thought maybe he might have moved down this way, but he apparently hasn't. Um, you know, it's possible he, Satis has taken this and he expands west and we bump here. Uh, but we're just going to have to take that chance. It's more important that we secure our outer borders first and then, you know, backfill. Um, now, this is Midgard over here. So I don't know where he's focusing his expansion. This throne and these mountains and the fact that Satis has taken this forest is kind of like blocking our movement around here. Um, this might be a tempting target. This is kind of pushing a bit closer into Tianxi and uh, Vanarus. And these two are, I mean, we can take these, but I'm, I think we take casualties fighting against a, me a medium amount of crossbowmen um, and a lot of heavy infantry. And I don't know if we could take one and then the next. Whereas here, we... Yeah, I don't know. I've decided to go for this one. This is an easy one. I don't expect we're going to take many casualties in this fight. Um, what else? Okay, we are moving um, the judge and the scout over here. Um, I'm... I haven't done any diplomacy yet with Tianqi, uh, so I'm a little hesitant to start building uh, a, a fort here. Um, but I do need to get my fort construction going because one of our strengths is we have scales, we have a great economy, we need to take advantage of that. We need to get our first forts up. Um, so, and it's gonna be here or, or here basically. Um, for our first fort. So I'm going to send a scout here and we can make the decision next turn whether or not we start building our fort. Um, we have reinforced this army and it is going to go take over this province which has some heavy cavalry in it. Uh, so, uh, but we have enough to, to take that on. I'm not afraid. Um, and then depending on what Atlantis does here, um, I mean Atlantis is not going to go to the water yet because he can wait uh, quite a while before he goes there. Um, he might go here or he might go there. Um, I want both of these, but unfortunately I can't take them. He, you know, he has beat me to at least one of these. Um, so I think that, well, we go here this turn. If Atlantis, but this kind of... If Atlantis goes here, then we definitely take this the turn after with this army. Um, this he'll never take from me because he knows it's my cap circle. If he takes this, then I will uh, bully him out of it. Um, I, I will not allow anybody to take any of these provinces that close to my, to my cap. Even though it's not technically my cap circle, it's two away from mine, three away from him. So I wouldn't let that happen. And this, so this early in the game, 
uh, I could, and you know, just because it's it's easier for me to reinforce. My troops are cheaper. He, even though we're going into winter, um, I like my sacreds and my troops would be able to take on his expansion parties. He would not be able to defend this. So I would just tell him, like I would negotiate with him for it. Um, but if you know, I'd say, look, I'm going to take this from you and you can't really, you're not going to be able to stop me. And then we're just going to have a stalemate on this border. So let's just agree to have it. So in other words, if he takes this, this turn and then I take that, I will then decide to take it back from him by force. Uh, if he goes here, then that will secure for me this province because at the worst he could do is intentionally bump me here. Now we might just negotiate it, but he might intentionally bump me. But again, I feel confident because next turn, after this army takes this, it will take this province with reinforcements from here. So this will be quite a strong army. Uh, we have our independent crossbows here. And uh, and they're being they are joined by this army, uh, which looks like this, which is sacreds and some defenders. Um, and this is only heavy infantry, so uh, we're just going to sit back and shoot them with crossbows, and then run in and hit them in their face. Um, afterwards, this army is going to go north and take this province, assuming Satis hasn't taken it. Um, or Midgard, but honestly, again, this is, well, see, no, this is, again, this is a problem. It is two from my cap, but it is three from Satis, so I feel that this is within my sphere of influence. Of course, me saying so doesn't make it so, but uh, that is something, you know, it allows me if we, if I do, if, let's say Satis grabs this, I can take it and there's a possibility that it does not escalate into a full war, right? I can just say, well, look, it's closer to me than it is to yours. Yes, it was a hostile act, but deal with it, right? Like it's it's something that he can live with that... Okay, so for example, if I expanded, um, let's say with this army, I expanded here, okay? Um... I mean, this has a mountain pass, so it's a little, it's a bit of a, a, a trickier thing, a trickier case. But, uh, but even if suppose it wasn't, or or say here, okay, <laughs> this is maybe a bit. No, this one's still three. Okay, what's a, yeah, this is the best example. Okay, if I expanded here, and later Tianqi decides he wants it, right? He might Tianqi if he conquers this province, but also attacks me everywhere else, and that's full on war. But if he just takes the one province and just sends me a message saying like, okay, dude, you got too close to me. I'm taking this province. That's it. You know, we don't have, this doesn't have to escalate any further. Then I would be open. I mean, I might decide no. I might decide no. This is the moment I'm going to go use this as a pretext to go to war with you. Maybe that's what I wanted all along. But I would have the option of backing down and I might be willing to do that. I might demand like, well, pay me a bit of gold for, you know, some lost income. Like we might have some concession. And that's the sim That's a similar thing I would do here. So, like, if Satis were to take this, or or even Midgard, right? Um, I would take it back, sending a message at the same turn, saying, "Look, I'm. This is not. I'm not declaring full war on you. I want this province, and I'm taking it. Uh, if you want to keep fighting me for the rest of the game, you can choose to do that, or you know, you can, <laughs> or we can not do that. That is entirely up to you." Um, anyways, so this is my target next for this group. Uh, in terms of recruitment, things are continuing as planned. We're going to have con Conjuration 3 soon-ish. Um, and I believe that's that. Um, you know, uh, let's... I. Oh, well, I looked a little bit into Satis um, because... Uh, and I'm not sure if I covered this in the last episode... Um, if, uh, well, as a refresher, uh, Satis, uh, is sort of an undead reanimating nation, but in particular, I was looking at what they would expand with, um, and the army they get to expand with is really bad. Uh, they get these militia, which are awful, and then they get some kind of, like, light infantry with 
javelins. I think they get these guys. They get light infantry with javelins and the militia. Anyways, it's a really bad starting army army for late age. Um, so I assume they're taking... Uh, and they don't have a great sacred. So to me, it makes sense that they would take scales. Um, so I assume they're either using falconeers or maybe... I mean, maybe they're taking sacreds with a very small blast just because they have high protection so you can expand with these guys. Um, yeah, honestly, <laughs> I think that yeah, I would do either one of these two things. Um, so, yeah, I feel like Satis is pretty weak early game. Um, if we did have to have conflict with somebody, um, like if I had to choose between my three neighbors who I would rather go to war with first, I think it would be Satis. Even though Satis has... So T Satis has an early research target, which is... Um, Enchantment 5. With Enchantment 5, they get Skelly Spam, and they have very good Skelly Spammers. Now, that is a little scary, but in the early game, like if you're just rushing Enchantment 5, you've only got a few mages. If you're committing your mages to fight in your early war, that kills your research, so you don't really want to do that often. Um, and at that early stage, like he doesn't have communions or anything, it's just pure old Skelly Spam. Um, like a strong army is just going to kill his army and get to the get and chew through the skeletons before the skeleton spam can really get started um so um and not only that but my commanders are these guys that also happen to be able to banish with a precision bless on top of it which makes the banish even uh more effective so i think i have a good matchup against satis um, the other thing is that at Enchantment Five, normally you would be that would also uh, allow you to do foul vapors, uh, but he doesn't have any uh, water nature access built in. Now, if he that's probably something that he's going to try to fix very soon. Maybe he has it on a pretender, so that would be something scary to worry about, right? That would be the one thing that would worry me is if he put up foul vapors, but he doesn't really have the paths for it. So, uh, you know, early on. Uh, before he can fix that magic diversity problem, I think he's a pretty good target for me. Um, Tenchi, I just think, is a stronger nation. Um, and I am a bit scared uh, to see what the weapons bless is, and I don't want to make a move before I know what that is. Um, so we'll try to do expansion as best we can, um, you know, around here. But uh, we'll have to see what exactly the bless is before we decide whether we engage. Because we are kind of on a clock. He's an air, he has air access, so he can do Arrowfend. So it's either we go in early before Arrowfend and take advantage of our crossbows. Or we go after when we're going to use our mages with uh, Storm and Thunderstrike, basically. And some air elementals. Uh, so those are the two timings. Uh, for Atlantis, we can kind of go any time. Uh, Atlantis does have a couple of... So they, they do Stygian Reigns well, but that doesn't really change the tactics that we're going to use against them that much. Um, they have a remote assassination spell, which is uh, a national spell for them, which is very good. Um, I feel like we could have a war with Atlantis whenever we wanted. Uh, the issue is that I really LA man is really bad at taking underwater provinces so I would be able to maybe conquer this land but he you know I'd have to constantly worry about attacks from the lake here so to me that doesn't make a lot of sense until I have a solution for that and maybe that means relying on whatever ally like allying with this player or this player who might be, maybe has an underwater solution, right? If this player has an underwater solution for these lakes, then I, you know, could apply pressure on land this way. Um, so to me, that's the issue with Atlantis. Um, okay, that's enough for this turn and this episode. I'm going to end the episode and we'll load the next turn right up and we'll talk about it then. So see you guys shortly. Take care.